All right, it's been a great, uh, great conference. Thank you for for the opportunity. Um, I have three three points in in wrapping up. Um, the first is about screen scraping. Do you all know? Does anybody not know what screen scraping is? Okay, great. Um, screen scraping is a, 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 the term of art used when uh, someone provides their username and password to access a service, like say their energy provider service, and they give the username and password to somebody else so that their computer systems can impersonate that user and get the information that way. Um, believe it or not, this is how data portability, such as it exists in the banking sector in America, works today. Um, I don't know about you, but sharing my username and password to my bank's website with a fintech aggregator um, is gives me some pause. <laughs> that is exactly what happens in the energy sector today in the U.S. in many respects in the absence of a consumer data right. And so... Um, I've heard some discussion um, today about how the introduction of this right comes with new risks um, around privacy, around cybersecurity, and, and those should be addressed. But also keep in mind the status quo does have risks too. And in the US, um, screen scraping is the best and the most reliable way to get the customer's information that's held by their energy provider. One of, uh, and, and I think it was uh, Daniel uh, McAuliffe, we, we chatted about this from, from Treasury a, a bit. He said, it's our job to make a system that's even better than screen scraping. So that there's no incentive to ask customers for their usernames and passwords because that's you know, there's security issues with that. It's, um, you know, there's, there's lots of problems with it. And, and, and I have to say, as an American, um, to hear someone from government say that we need to provide a better solution than screen scraping, I, in 10 years in the U.S., I've never heard anyone in the U.S. government, local, state, or federal, say something like that. That is fantastic, and that is absolutely um, a goal that, that we need to work towards. So thank you. Uh, number two, and this is, I suppose, a piece of advice, uh, let there be intermediaries. Intermediaries can be wonderful, fantastic things. Um, intermediaries are things like USB. Um, no, one, no one says, oh God, I really just you know, love how when I plug in a new keyboard or a mouse to my computer, there's this amazing interaction that occurs with peripheral devices and all of a sudden I can begin using these services. No one ever says that. They just plug it in and it works. But there was a lot of work in the middle of making those interfaces standardized and useful so that I could buy any mouse or, or keyboard off the shelf and plug it into a computer and even across Mac and, and Windows, it pretty much works 99% of the time. So in a similar fashion, uh, when you think about the uses of customer data, um, I, don't be too prescriptive about what those uses will be. I think some of the most um, exciting uses of, of customer energy data will be things that we can't know about today. And that's fine, and that's, that's, that's by design. Um, there's a tendency to want to say, you know, oh, well, customers aren't that engaged with this topic, so what are they really, what are they really going to do, um, even if they have this data? Well, the customers don't want the data. They want the services around that. And, and I would say let the private market and private capital solve some of those engagement problems. Um, I'll just give you a quick example. Um, American energy consumers are similarly disengaged. Probably not that surprising. Um, there was a demand response provider in the state of California that it's competitive venture-backed company that was able to uh, gamify demand response and put money in people's wallets. Uh, they also let you earn points and badges and peer recognition in a sort of game 
uh, that it's actually came out of the uh, one of the founders uh, was from Zynga, which is the company that created Facebook games like Mafia Wars and so on, uh, games that personally I never played. Maybe you never played them either. Uh, but it was an immensely successful billion-dollar company that you probably uh, don't don't know much about. And they so they they didn't approach this as a, you know gosh we have these disengaged consumers. They said if we can make people play a game and they can earn points and that might be satisfying to them and they can also turn off their energy loads between 4 and 7 p.m. which is the critical period in California then we get customer engagement so engagement was a byproduct of the thing they were doing it was not the end in and of itself and so um, it was their private capital that got those consumers engaged and it was exactly the provision of the information with uh, a, a unique business model that came in where those uh, roughly 100,000 plus customers in California are now engaged with this platform that's not from the incumbent provider. Uh, okay, last point. I'm, I'm really excited about uh, Australia's potential in this area with the consumer data right. And partially that's because of President Trump. Um, and my sort of general um, decreasing uh, or worsening pessimism about government. Um, but there are some fantastic public servants that we've heard from here today who are really trying to solve these issues for the public interest. Um, that's really refreshing as an American to have people actually talking about the public interest um, without without an axe to grind or without um, you know some other large moneyed interest that is you know hoping to influence the conversation uh, I'll, too many public servants in America are kind of playing a revolving door of uh, going from you know large think tanks funded by billionaires with a certain set of interests to then serve their time in government and to go back and so um, I'm it's it's you you might not be happy with your government um i would expect that that you all aren't always are but the level of of maturity uh in sophistication around some of these discussions um is is truly fantastic and i'll give you one one quick example i heard several several people talk about user testing to assess whether customers can effectively share their information with the uh, CDR. That is like music to my ears. People, I, I'm, the, I'm the only one in the wilderness talking about how we need uh, user testing in the US. And so the folks in this room are thinking about this. Um, you're thinking about it with a customer-centered perspective that in many respects is miles ahead of, of where we are. So um, I strongly encourage you to uh, to keep it up. Um, I hope to have some of you uh, visit the U.S. and give us some of your learnings and experience because um, I think the intelligence level is, is impressively high uh, here in this room on this particular issue. So thank you very much.